Hey, welcome to module number seven. Yeah, we are in module number seven already. How about that? This module number seven is going to be about early equipment management. It is a, a very important part of world-class maintenance. And uh, perhaps some of you have not yet arrived to that stage. This is a very advanced stage of world-class maintenance. Uh, but uh, you will enjoy it, and especially if you have not yet arrived there, I believe that what we are going to comment and define in this module is going to be very useful for all of you. Because this way, you will know exactly what to expect and where we are going with our, our new technologies in maintenance, in advanced maintenance. So, EMM, EEM, as, a, as a, we said before, is a very advanced uh, aspect. And uh, as we progress in, in uh, the education of maintenance of our technicians and uh, also our operators in the, in the plant, we will be preparing them and preparing our environment in the plant so that they get empowered to participate in important decisions for the business. This is critical because when we have this, this level of involvement, our operators and technicians will be a very valuable opinion when we come to the point of ordering new equipment, buying new tools, etc. This is critical. And uh, early equipment maintenance does that exactly. The management of uh, of those uh, of those issues uh, is critical because who knows better the characteristics that uh, the equipment should have for its uh, easier operation than the operators themselves. That's the idea. Okay. Now, the advantages of uh, early equipment management are. For the maintenance technicians, they will have a list of the appropriate, appropriate technical characteristics that the equipment should comply with. So this is going to be very important because they will be applying their experience in this. Now, they will also determine which type of components may be already proven that they work good so that the, the new equipment be equipped with those like relays, valves, uh, transformers, uh, engine, uh, engines, motors, uh, bearings, etc. So it is critical. Uh, now, this is going to also help reduce inventory. Remember that inventory of parts sometimes gets out of control. It's too much. So we don't want to have too much uh, inventory of components. This will also provide the opportunity for the people in maintenance to give the manufacturer some ideas to improve the maintainability of the equipment. Meaning what can the manufacturer of the equipment do so that we get a higher quality of components and a more easy access to every part in the equipment so that we can provide maintenance. Now, on the other hand, the operators will be establishing some ergonomically sound features that might have been overlooked by the manufacturers in the past. Now, contributing with their previous experiences, this is going to make the equipment much more easy to operate, probably much safer to operate. That is wonderful. They will determine where the positions of the controls should be. They will determine uh, many issues that will make their jobs easier. Also, the operators will be receiving, and the technicians too, will be receiving some information previous to having the equipment in plant. They will be receiving some information 
about uh, the equipment so that the, when the, the equipment arrives, we are better prepared. Now, here is an important reminder, okay? This is critical. A systematic education and training of all our personnel is a must. We cannot expect a ride to the world class maintenance if we have not educated and trained our people correctly. Do you agree? Of course. Now, only when they are prepared, only when they are really educated and trained, then is when they can start assuming there is no empowerment and this is no uh, type of intervention or participation in the decisions of the equipment when we're going to buy new equipment, okay? This process is very beneficial, but if we do it the other way around, if we start empowering people before we give them a thorough education and training, then we are up for trouble. Then we may be pro pro making this opportunity of a chaos, and you don't want chaos in your operation. So make sure that the next time that you are training your people, think how you are preparing them for getting into a higher level of responsibility in the processes, okay? Now, as you progress in this aspect, the equipment suppliers will also become your partners and they will also benefit of your team's contributions. Absolutely, it's very good, it's very good for them. So obviously operators who see in the new equipment some of their ideas, guess what? They are going to feel that ownership that is so important to keep the equipment in excellent condition. They will be more careful about the operation of the equipment because it is theirs. It has some features that they put into it. This is a win-win situation, my friends. Let's do that. Let's do that. Now, our next module, our next module num number eight is uh, very critical. We're going to talk about uh, CMMS, meaning the maintenance uh, through computer control, computer control uh, systems, this computerized maintenance managers, management systems. Um, we will have a lot of advantages here because the, the CMMS helps us do our job with more precision and be, being able to measure everything that we do. So it is critical. Now, on the other hand, we also will assure that everybody participates in the work order system. Oh, the work order system is wonderful. I have been working with work order systems for many, many years. Uh, we started this at Ford Motor Company in Mexico before computer existed. Uh, we, we did it by hand and it was a very, very good system and our friends in manufacturing and in, in production areas were very happy that we did this part of the work because that way we could measure much better our progress and our productivity. I thank you very much, as always, for being with us. So don't miss our next module, module number eight.